All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. How's everyone doing today? Everybody still awake? Last session of the day? All right. Sorry about that. We had a little bit of difficulties, but we are now up and running. So uh, for the last talk of the day, we're going to talk numbers, data, analytics. I'm sure that makes everyone really excited. Um, so we're going to go run through this. Um, I'm going to run through this a little quick uh, because this is a two-hour presentation that I squeezed down into 45 minutes. Um, I did take out a few little items. So we're going to go through it. If I can ask if you can hold questions to the end, we will have time to go through and answer questions um, at the end about it. So I'm just going to dive right in real quick. Uh, my name is Chris Edwards. Um, I own a company called Data Driven, or Agency Data Driven Labs. We do analytics, website development, things along those nature. Um, I've been doing WordPress uh, development for a very long time, website developer as well, and I've been doing analytics since it used to be known as Urchin Analytics before Google bought it. So uh, I've been working with Google Analytics ever since it came about, um, and it is a really great tool for understanding your visitors. So before we dive into that real quick, just kind of tell you, uh, just to pull the room, who here has heard of Google Analytics? All right. Uh, who here uses Google Analytics on their site? Who here wants to use Google Analytics on their site? All right. So we're going to go ahead and talk about how we get that working um, and then what we can do with it. So the first thing you want to do when you're setting up Google Analytics is you want to create a measurement plan. So what this is going to do is really let you understand what you're trying to track. Often when I find people that go, they create a Google Analytics account, they throw some analytics up on their website, and then they're done. And that's all they ever do, and they don't know what they're tracking. I have a lot of people, I ask them, okay, well, you have analytics. I mean, what's your traffic? I'm like, I don't know. Well, how many conversions do you have? I have no idea. Have you ever logged into analytics? No, I don't think so. I put the code on there, and that's it. And it's like, well, then why do you have it there? Um, and so one of the biggest things is, is a really useful tool, but you have to know what you're looking to track and what you want to track. So you've got to create a measure, measurement plan. Um, you have things called key performance indicators, KPIs. Um, that's basically your, uh, whatever you're, you're, you're trying to go after. That could be people signing up for your mailing list. That could be people making a purchase. That could be people signing up for anything on your website, anything you want to call a conversion. Those are going to be your, your KPIs. You may also have KPIs that are how many people came to the site today, or how many people, how long did they spend on the site? And all those different things uh, that could be considered a KPI. Basically, a key performance indicator is whatever you or whoever you're giving this information to wants to know. So what we want to do is we want to define what are these object objectives and what are these KPIs. Uh, we also want to identify um, any kind of data, data segmentation and set our targets for that. So if we're wanting to look at certain items, so let's say we're looking at, we want to know demographic-wise. We want to know what performance we have with um, age groups or uh, gender or any of these other different things that we may want to log in and see how each of these different demographic groups are performing. Then we want to go ahead and find out what are those that, we need to, that we're going to need to track. This could also be where they come from. Maybe we want to track based off a source. So if they came from social or if they came organically through a search or they were direct traffic and we want to track that. Just understand what those segmentations are going to look like because it's going to help us in developing our actual install of analytics. Then we got to create the implementation plan. So that's where we just sit down, we go through and we figure out what needs to be added. Do we need to add any special event tracking or anything along that along those ways? And then if you're a larger corporation, you can work with your developers um, and give them this implementation plan. Some, sometimes you may not be able to install all of these things, and you may need to work with the development team. So you want to create exactly what you want done so that they know what to implement on your site. And then the biggest thing, what good is analytics if you're never going to look at it? So we want to define reporting, right? Uh, we need to figure out what format does this reporting need to be in, what's the frequency of this reporting, who's going to see this reporting, how, how do they want to see this reporting, and so forth. Um, how many of you came by and saw my uh, Data Studio talk yesterday? OK, there's a couple of you guys. There's a tool called Data Studio, um, Google Data Studio. that You can actually pull all of this information in and create dashboards and reports inside of it, uh, which makes it very easy to understand. Um, the video will probably end up being up on WordPress uh, WordPress.tv um, after they get them posted. And so you can go back, if you missed that talk, and you can watch that talk and, and see how to implement it. 
So in this one, we're going to just focus mostly on just setting up Google Analytics on our website. So let's talk about setup and installation. Within Google Analytics, you have something, you have three different things. You have accounts, properties, and views. And you'll see this graphic over here. This is kind of how they're, over, they're laid out. The account, this, um, this is the overall account within uh, Google Analytics. Uh, normally, this is going to be the company, right? Your property, these are the website. This could be uh, your website. Uh, this could be a mobile application, device, or any of those different things. So if you have multiple websites for your company, some people have a separate store or a separate blog that's not part of their main site. Um, or if they have multiple locations, they may have a site for each location. Uh, that's what your properties are going to be. And then your views, this is the access point where all of the reports are defined under. So you could have a view, and we'll talk about it in a little bit with filters, but you can have a view that's dedicated just for your dev environment, your live site, your test site, and different things along those lines. So to give you an idea, make it a little more logical, you might have the account that's just shoe store, right? And so you have my shoe store, you have blog.myshoestore, and you have another property that's my shoe store mobile app, if you had a mobile app, for example. Um, so each of these properties are all under the same account. Each of these properties would have their own view as well. So if we look at, say, property one, it has an unfiltered view, master view, and a test view. Google recommends a minimum of three views. I also recommend a minimum of three views. Um, the master view, this is going to be the view. We're going to talk in a little bit about filters and everything. This is going to be the view that we apply filters to, that we apply all of our uh, data manipulation to. And this is where we're going to put everything um, and mess with. The unfiltered view, that's the view that we set up, but we never touch again. Uh, and I'll explain why we do that in just a second. Test view, this is where we're going to be doing all of our testing. Uh, so if we're wanting to run certain tests and stuff, we would test them inside here, test certain filters, whatnot, and then we can move them into the master view. So what the unfiltered view is, and the reason you have it, is when you start applying filters, and we'll talk about those in a little bit, you could accidentally block a whole bunch of stuff from getting into your analytics. You'll never know that if you don't have an unfiltered view. I've seen people set up, set up uh, uh, filters wrong on one of the views before, and what they ended up doing was blocking half the traffic to their site. And so they came to me and said, my traffic dropped. Well, they didn't have an unfiltered view. I had no way of knowing this, so I ended up creating an unfiltered view at that time that had no, no filters on it, and instantly I was able to see that they were only getting half the traffic, and we realized their filter was a little too restrictive and was actually blocking most things. Had they had the unfiltered view, they wouldn't have lost data, they would have still had that data from in the past. Google Analytics only tracks from the point you put it on your website and forward. Any views you set up will only track from the second you create that view and forward. So you cannot go backwards and find information, so you can't create a view and then go back and see what happened before. So you want to always make sure that you have the unfiltered view set up, which when you set up your account or originally, you'll automatically have an account, a property, and one view. Leave that one view and then create a new view that'll be your master view that you, that you uh, can edit. Uh, if you don't want to do a test view, that one you can skip, but just always make sure there's at least the one unfiltered view uh, for the most part. So we're going to talk about installation. I'm going to focus, since this is WordCamp, I'm going to focus on WordPress installation. If you're new to this um, and you're not familiar with code, there's plugins to do this. One, one such plugin is Monster Insights. It actually walks you right through setting everything up. Um, it's really easy. Uh, it'll go through. It's uh, got a free version and a paid version. The free version will get everything you need set up. The uh, paid version, I think, adds in, in enhanced e-commerce tracking. Um, but uh, you should be able to set everything up with just the free version of Monster Insights. Advanced users, you could install Google Analytics code directly or using Google Tag Manager. Um, I'm not going to jump into what Google Tag Manager is um, just uh, for the sake of time, but you can install the code directly on your site. So you would do this inside the head section of your website. Now, some themes actually give you the ability to add code from your options inside your themes you are able to add items into the head section. Uh, Genesis Framework has, a, has the ability to do that. A couple of the other theme frameworks do. I know Beaver Builder has, if you're using the Beaver Builder uh, page builder, it has the ability to add that in there. 
Just check with your theme. If not, you may have to actually edit the theme, create a child theme and edit the theme. So you'll, if, if you have to do that, you may want to check with your developer or just use a plugin that will allow you to do it um, if you're not familiar with editing code. Oh, okay, so uh, the question was, why the header versus the footer? Um, the main reason that you want to put uh, the code, it, it is a, a synchronous JavaScript, so it will not slow your site down. The only reason you ever want to put any JavaScript down in the footer is if it's not asynchronous, um, and so you do want it up inside the header to load up in the header, because what happens is if someone's clicking through your site really quick, and you have a really long page, all the items have to load before that script loads, and so what happens is you, you miss page views, you miss actions that happen because if they're clicking through real fast, you may miss those three pages they click through real fast to get that last page and it's not gonna make sense to you how they got from your home page to this page way, way down here and skipped all these because they moved quick. So always put it in the header um, because it is the asynchronous code. All right, so we're gonna talk about the standard reports that come with uh, Google Analytics. Real-time reports. This is one people don't always see. Um, can you also hear me? Okay. I'm going to speak really loud. Can you all hear me in the back? All right. Um, so real-time uh, real reports uh, basically allows you to see uh, your traffic, uh, uh, view your traffic in real time, what's going on on your website at that exact moment in time. You can see what pages people are actively looking at, what they're actively doing. Um, and you can actually use this. This is one of the pro tips I have. You can use this for actual live testing of your analytics to see, did I install analytics correctly? Is everything working? Are my goals tracking? Are my events tracking? Is everything else on my site properly tracking? So uh, if you have lots of traffic, there's another way to do this, and I'll talk about that in a second. But basically, this is what the real-time report looks like. Uh, this is based off the Google Store. Uh, this is a screenshot I took of that, but you'll notice this shows that you have 25 users on your website right now, and you can actually see where they're coming from, what the source they're coming from, and how many of those people came from that source that are currently on your website. Uh, you have a lot of other little items you can do. Let's see, where do I start? Oh, okay. Uh, you'll see right here along the, uh, your left side here, uh, you'll see that there's, you can see locations, traffic sources, uh, and content, events, conversions. You can see all these different items. Oh, here we go. Uh, you see all the different items and actually see them happening in real time. So this is a great way to test items. If you have a lot of traffic coming to your site, it's a little hard to see what's going on and you're doing some testing, you can actually create a unique UTM uh, to filter your, your traffic. So you can create a UTM code, which we'll t I'll show you how to do that here at the end. Um, but the UTM code we can actually set, uh, for example, this one, you'll see the arrow pointing to it. I set it to be test traffic so I can actually follow along what I'm doing. So if I click on test traffic, it creates a filter across the top of this, this report, which is now set as test traffic. And now we can actually see everything that just that test traffic is doing throughout uh, the page. So we can go through here and see where is it coming from, what's it doing, and it allows us to test and see if our uh, different things are working. Other uses for using real time, uh, obviously you can display an office on a screen monitor an active campaign blast, or view trending content. Uh, recently, one of my articles got featured in one of Google's newsletters, went out, had a ton of traffic hit my website, like out of nowhere, all at once. And it was really fun just to watch and see after all this traffic, almost five, 6,000 people rolled into my website within minutes. And it was just really fun to watch the different paths that people took, and just to understand, okay, look, look at all these people going here, 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 and just really seeing what everybody was doing. It was coming from this, uh, this newsletter and just watching that traffic come in. Uh, so you can, you can use that. You can also find trending content. So if you have, for example, a very active site or a very active blog or a news site, you can see what people are actively looking at right that moment. And it'll allow you to maybe know if you should you know, send out a follow-up a story or something else along those lines. So then you also have audience reports. Um, audience reports. Uh, these basically let you know who your visitors are, right? So if you look over on the uh, right side of the screen, you'll see all the different reports that are within there. It's one of the largest. It has 15 uh, subsections in there, but you can actually get in there, see demographics, interests, where they're coming from, uh, their behavior, what technology they're using. Uh, this is, allows you to kind of dive in if you want to see 
how many Mac users versus Windows users do you have? Or how many Android uh, users versus iOS users? Um, or what browser are they using? Uh, this really allows you to understand that technology and understand what people who are coming to your site are actually using. You also have acquisition reports. So this allows us to know what channels work. Um, so <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to know where people are coming from from our site. So often, uh, if you've built the site, you're, you're, you're promoting it across all different places. You've got people coming in from Google search. You've got people coming in from social media. Uh, you've got people who just got your business card and typing in your uh, name and coming to your website directly, right? Uh, what you want to do is you want to find out information about where all these people are coming from. Know your, is your AdWords campaign that you're running uh, driving everything? How about your SEO efforts that you're working on? Or social media. Uh, we can also create UTMs so we can track things like uh, email newsletters and that kind of source uh, and understand where everyone's coming from. So all of that's over here in this section. We're going to talk about the UTMs piece and how we can apply that to track those. Uh, but we have the ability of really diving in. Uh, you see all traffic, um, AdWords, Search Console. You can actually open all of these up and uh, actually find where all your traffic sources are coming from. You have behavior reports. Uh, obviously, this is what, the, what behaviors people are doing on your website. So uh, you can see what pages they're looking at, things like site speed, what are they searching for, and then you also have event tracking. Uh, I'm going to dive into how we set up event tracking. Uh, it's one of the most important pieces of tracking analytics, so we can actually track custom events they're doing on your site. So are they clicking this particular button you want them to click over here, or did they sign up for a newsletter, or did they do these different actions that we want them to do on our website? Uh, this just allows us to know what's going on, what type of content are they viewing. This is the area that you're going to be able to see what pages are getting the most hits on your website and things along that. And then this is what it's all about. This is conversion reports, or I'm sorry, uh, the conversion report. Um, it contains all of our goals and conversions. If you have e-commerce set up, <coughs> excuse me, you have e-commerce set up on your site, what will happen is you'll be able to then uh, see your sales uh, and, and, and revenue and products and, and, and a lot of information related to that. But all of that's going to be loaded under conversions. You, this is where you also set up your goals across your site. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the goals in just a few minutes here. Uh, but this is the section that you would find all of the conversions. And this is ultimately what tracking everything comes down to. You want to know how successful is your site, how are things performing. All right, so we're going to talk about filters and advanced segments. So what's the difference between the two of these? A filter applies, if you remember us talking earlier about the views, right? A filter applies to a view. It basically is a firewall, and it stops everything that does not meet the filter specifications from ever getting through. So if you say that anybody coming from, um, let's say anybody coming from a certain IP address, right? Your house, your house IP address, you want to block yourself from ever being tracked. You put that up there, and all the other traffic goes through, and then if your IP address comes, it gets stopped and never even enters Google Analytics. So it stops it from ever going in at the property level. An advanced segment is a, another piece where we can actually go in and we can isolate visitors into groups or segments. So we can say anybody who has come from this IP address, we want to track what they did. Or did they come from all the people who came from Google Organic Search, we want to just see just the traffic inside analytics of those people. That's never actually stopped. That's, that's, that's able to go backwards. You're able to track um, previous data with that uh, without making it. And it doesn't make any permanent changes to your actual data. It's just for viewing that data. So the biggest thing to understand is a filter will keep it from ever coming into analytics versus an advanced segment allows it to come into analytics and then you can, uh, or it's already in an analytics, you're able just to filter to see it at that time when you're looking at those standard reports that we had. So we're going to talk real quick uh, how to create one of these filters, right? Uh, you're going to go over in the admin, and you're going to go down to under the view settings. You're going to hit built, uh, filter, and you want to do the filtering at the view level uh, for the one that you want to do. Remember, we have the unfiltered view that we don't want to touch. You have the master view and the test views those are the ones that we want to go ahead and apply these filters to. So when you hit filters, you can go ahead, you go over here, hit add filter, and then you fill out the information. So this is to block an internal IP address. 
Uh, this is blocking the IP address 123.123, so forth. Uh, you can go ahead and set this up, and this is like a predefined one. You also have the ability of creating a custom one. You'll see with the custom, you have a lot of different things you can pick from, right? So we can do by host name, page title, a referral, a lot of different other items in there, and really kind of uh, filter off of all these different dimensions that are located within Google Analytics. So why would we want to use filters? Some good examples are excluding internal traffic. If you have an office um, that has a couple internal employees or just your own home, you're going to not use your website like a typical uh, visitor will. You're going to click on things, be testing things, and you're not going to behave the same way that people come to your site. So what happens is, if all that data gets mixed in, you're going to be reacting to data that's not accurate. So what we want to do is we want to filter ourselves out so we're not being tracked, so we're not being picked up in our own Google Analytics because we don't care about ourselves. We want to see what other, people's, other people are doing. So you might want to set up a, a filter to exclude internal traffic. You might want to exclude development sites. So same thing here, development sites, you're going to be doing a whole bunch of stuff that normal people aren't going to be doing on your site. So you can exclude by the host name. So for example, this one was for a site called FN Amazing. Uh, it was fnamazing.local was our local site. We just excluded that entire host name. So anything going on on there never even made it into that view. Now, here's another example. Um, we, I don't think I have it in here. You can also include only data uh, information from development sites. So this is where we talk about those other views. Remember we had that test view? That test view might be my local environment, right? So on that test view, I'm going to say only include traffic to the host name, fnamazing.local. So it blocks the public traffic from ever going in there, but all the, all the internal traffic is going in there. And now that allows me to test out things and still see what's happening with that data. And remember, everything's still going to unfiltered view because Unfiltered, we have no filters on it. Uh, lower casing on campaign uh, attributes. By default, when you set up UTM parameters, um, and like I said, we'll talk about how to create this in a minute. If you set up something with a uh, uh, uppercase and then something else with lowercase and then something camel case, and you have all these different um, ways that people are putting them in, Google Analytics is case sensitive. So what's going to happen is Google Analytics is going to look at all of these and go, these are all different. And so if you have different people on your marketing team or you just forgot what you did last time when you did this uh, and set up this campaign, all that information is going to count differently. So we can actually force it to lowercase all the different items coming in. Uh, so you see here, we hit custom filter, we hit lowercase, and then we said to do it on the filter field, campaign medium. Uh, you'd want to set up, uh, usually set up one for campaign medium, campaign source, campaign content, campaign term, and campaign name. I kind of wish Google would put it all into one grouping because you really should do it on all of them, but unfortunately, you'll have to create one for each one uh, just because of the way it's set up. All right, so excluding query parameters. This is kind of another thing that I like to do. Uh, basically, this is getting a little more advanced, uh, but when you have um, ordering systems and whatnot, you can actually have where people go to website.com, order.php, and then it has the order number after it. Each one of those is going to show up as a different page inside of your analytics. If you don't want that and you want all of them just to show up as order.php and not look past the query string and not add the query string in as a separate page, you can set up a filter to do that. And basically what that does is that rewrites that data to all say just order.php. Um, so you'll see it's a little more advanced. Actually, it's under the advanced tab. <laughs> but you have filter A, extract A, which is the requ request URL. And then it's got some regex behind it. And then it outputs it all again. Uh, you'll be able to find all of these different filters. They're actually in a solutions gallery. So uh, while they look a little complex, these are all ones you can actually just download yourself if you're not familiar with writing regex or code. Some others have already developed these. You can actually just download them right into your account and use them. So we'll talk about where that solutions gallery is uh, in just a minute. Um, other, other things that we can do, or, or other filter examples, are include and exclude specific campaigns, lowercase on uh, uh, request URLs, attach a host name, include mobile only. Maybe you want to track mobile only on a, on a view if you wanted to do that 
or include or exclude specific uh, subdirectories. So maybe you want to track just the blog as a, as a, a view or just the shop as a view. You can do that. Um, and I do recommend against those last two, mobile and excluding subdirectories, because we can do those with advanced segments, which is the next thing we're going to talk about. So advanced segments allows you basically, here we go, we'll take this page here. Yeah. So with advanced segments, you can actually click up here and select which segment. Though by default, all your reports are always going to have those all users selected. And that's what you're going to be seeing. Now we can actually add additional segments in there. And you see these are the default segments that are built in. We can select those, and now we can actually see multiple graphs to compare things. So right here, we're comparing all users to organic and then uh, referral traffic. And you can kind of see where all that traffic is coming from. It adds all of those as different colors inside of each graph. So this is really great information if you want to really understand what are people doing, how are they finding, or, 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 or just really kind of segment out that data. Again, this goes backwards. So this allows us, unlike the filters, we're able to filter backwards on our data and create this because it's not manipulating any of our data. It's just showing, it's just changing the way it's viewed. So when we want to create advanced segments, all you got to do is uh, whenever you want to add a segment, you hit the add segment there. And then you can pick any of those default ones you see along the side there, or you can hit that red button that says new segment. Once we hit new segment, put in a name, select what you want the segment to be, and you can save that segment. Obviously, put in um, whatever data you want to filter by. So I like to always do the advanced ones. It gives me a little bit more control. There are some default items, just like the filters. But when you do like your own uh, custom ones, I'll do advanced. I'll select conditions. And what I'll do is we can actually change this box here. So we can change the metric, or I'm sorry, the dimension, which right now is set to add content. We can change that dimension to be anything. So that could be host name, that could be um, traffic source, uh, device type, all of those different things. We can select that and we can say contains or doesn't uh, or excludes or any or is greater than. Um, so if you want to look at people who've only spent more than a thousand dollars on your website, you can say revenue is greater than one thousand, and you can actually see what traffic that spent more than a thousand dollars on your site what they did. Um, Sequences. Sequences is kind of cool because it's kind of a similar idea, but you can actually go step by step. So you can say, if they went to my home page and then they went to my about page, uh, I want to see what the people who went to my home page and about page and then straight to my about page, what they did after that, or uh, any kind of other funnel that you want to see. You can create sequence sequences to see that kind of information. So top 10 advanced segment uh, recommendations. Obviously, you can do referral, uh, referral traffic source vi by visitor type, location, geography, content view, landing page type, a whole bunch of these different items, even by technology, right? So uh, I do a lot of times where I segment out by mobile versus desktop, uh, because that's really important to know how those different users are performing, since you know, you're looking now at anywhere between 50 to 75% of your traffic to your website is mobile-based. There is the Advanced Segments Gallery, so you can actually go in and download these. Um, it's at, when, when you're looking at the Advanced Segments, there'll be a link to it. Um, I don't know the link off the top of my head, um, but when you're looking at Advanced Segments, there is, a, there is a link to go find ones in the gallery. This is also where you can find filters as well inside the gallery. Event Tracking, Event Tracking uh, allows us to track uh, what users' interactions are with our, our page. Um, so this is where we can track like if they downloaded something, mobile ad clicks, gadget, um, flash elements, Ajax embedded elements, any of these different things that we want to track, we can track them all as events. And basically they come into our system like this. This is tracking a UTM builder. Um, and we can actually see how many people copied versus how many people saved the URL. Uh, and then we can see the different actions they took. And the way we define those, uh, or here you see uh, the event category. Yeah. Uh, so the event category is what, uh, what we, okay, yeah. So the event category is what category that we want to group all of these items by. Event action is going to be what they did, obviously. So for example, in this one, this is like uh, YouTube videos. So did they play, pause, they get to 0%. 
50%, 75%. And then uh, the label, a lot of times this is going to be like the name of whatever content it is. So if it was a newsletter, it could be a uh, uh, sidebar newsletter, and then it could be the action would be signed up, and then your actual label could be whatever newsletter they signed up for. To add this in, uh, you can add it in through JavaScript. There is an implementation guide on Google of how to do this. So, but this is kind of an example of how you would do it. Uh, you'd add this as an on-click, um, or you can actually have your developer add it in. If it's an Ajax script, you can have your developer add it into your JavaScript as well. Um, there are some plugins that actually will add these in automatically. So you just got to look at what plugins you're using to do that. So goal tracking, uh, goals measure, basically goals measure what the ultimate, the ending goal you want. So and this is the difference between event tracking and goals. Um, a, goal, a goal is what the, you ultimately wanted somebody to do. This is they actually completed a main item. You can only have 20 goals per Google Analytics uh, property, so, or per analytics view. So with event tracking, that's where you're gonna like track all the different buttons or anything like that. But then this is where you're gonna track if they actually completed something, say they actually signed up for your service or they completed it. So if you're tracking every single funnel through the step of sign up, you'd only track the final step as the actual goal completion. The other ones would just be events. You have different types, uh, you have URL destination, uh, URL destination goals, uh, visit, di uh, visit dur duration, pages, pages, visit goals, and event goals. So the two we're gonna, or the two we're gonna talk about, um, obviously visit duration and page uh, slash visits goals, number of pages visit uh, versus how long it stayed on your page. But the two we're gonna talk about is URL destination, which is tracking how many visits to a URL uh, they did versus event goals, or we can actually say one of those events that we did, that if they completed one of those events, that that's an actual goal. So um, you wanna know, obviously, what those important metrics are. So like, we, I usually use goals for finding leads, trial signups, account creation, newsletter signups, white paper downloads, or ebook downloads. So to set these up, they're really simple. Uh, on the left side, you'll see a destination-based versus on the right is a event-based. You'll see we basically say if they go to a certain page on this one versus over on the event-based, we're saying if the category, action, label, or value of the uh, events that we talked about, if they equal any of these items, then go ahead and list it as a goal that's been completed. You can actually assign values to the goal. Uh, so if you say that every time someone completes your lead form, that that is worth about $200 to you, you can actually put that in and actually track that inside of your uh, Google Analytics as well. With goals, we can actually see conversion rates. So this is what's really cool. You can actually filter down by the different traffic sources. So right here we have Google being Yahoo AOL. Uh, this is based off, I think, the Google store. And you'll see that we actually have a conversion rate of 33%, 35%, 28%, and 28% um, going down for goal six, and then goal seven has a different conversion rate. You can actually see those conversion rates for each one of those, which is really kind of cool to do. Um, I do want to talk real quick about UTMs. UTMs allow you basically to know what drove the traffic, what tweet drove traffic, um, you know, where are people coming from. So if you post a, a Twitter link out there, you can see they came from Twitter, but you can't see which tweet they came from. Or if you send out an email newsletter, you want to see what email newsletter they came from or even what item they clicked. And the way we do that is we make this really, it, it's basically called uh, UTM. It's a whole string of stuff after URL. So you'll see here, I'm sure you've seen these before, really long, ugly URLs, but we're gonna break it down so it's a little easier to see. Uh, so in this one, we have these four different items listed. Basically, you have the website URL, which is that first part. You have then the campaign source, which is this, this piece here, the medium, the uh, campaign name, and content and term. So you'll see it's actually broken out when we actually highlight it. It's actually pretty easy to see what each item is. So the campaign name, this is gonna be, for example, uh, what we're calling our campaign. This could be spring sale, product, um, you know, whatever your promo code is. 
But any of these different things, it's what you're going to name this campaign to use across all your different uh, mediums and sources. Your source is going to be where is it coming from, right? So is it coming from Google, Facebook, Twitter, MailChimp? So you're going to put that item in there so you have that source coming over so you can actually filter and create advanced segments based off of that. Then we also have um, our medium. So is it a banner ad? Is it an email, a post, a tweet? Any of those different items, we can actually pull all of those in as well. And then content, if you're going to A-B test certain ads, you can actually create a content one, say, add A and add B, and so we can see how those performed as well. And then we have segmentation, uh, or I'm sorry, term. <laughs> So UTM term, this is used really great if you're using, say, uh, Bing or one of these other tools. Google AdWords automatically brings all this information over for keywords, so you don't have to use UTMs with it. But if you're using a different ad network, you may want to put the, the keyword term inside this section here. Uh, this is where we can see the campaign information in Google Analytics. It's a little small to see, but if you go under acquisitions, campaigns, then all campaigns, you'll see right here, number three, you got your campaign source medium. And basically, we can filter down by our campaigns and see all kinds of information. So look at this, acquisition, behavior, conversions, even revenue. We're able to see all of this information based off of those. So now I can actually come back and know what campaign is working. And we can actually sort not just by campaign names, but we can also sort that by medium and source and all those other items that we just put into there throughout our item. So you're thinking, that's really cool, but that was a lot of uh, parameters to put behind that URL to just write out. Uh, you don't have to write this out. There's a bunch of tools out there that make these. Just do a Google search for online UTM builder. You'll find a bunch of them. We actually have one that's free to use as well. It's a free tool on our site at datadrivenlabs.io slash UTM. Uh, basically, oh, I can't show you because I'm, this is a PDF because I had issues with my computer. But basically, they look similar to this. Uh, this was actually a video and looked really cool, but whatever. Uh, you can fill out the information here, and what it will do is once you fill it all out, it just gives you that UTM code. Problem is, they're really ugly. Um, that's a lot of stuff. You're going to see that URL. It looks really bad to send that out. So what I recommend to do, use a shortener service. So uh, Bitly is a great shortener service uh, to use to make that link look a lot smaller, a lot shorter, um, and easier to handle. And then just take that and then put that into wherever else you're putting that link. All right, sorry I had to get through that really quick. But I think I made it through in 45 minutes. I need to make a quick note. Yes. Uh, we will all be congregating in here for the closing. So you guys have the best seats in the house. Everybody else is going to be filling in the holes. So just before you give up, you get seats. All right? We'll be doing some giveaways in the future. All right. All right, questions? Yes, in the back. Yes, so the question was um, do, uh, about consistency and, and do you have to, uh, can you create whatever you want? Yes, you can create whatever you want and one of my suggestions I always say is create a UTM spreadsheet uh, in your marketing so you can try to keep track of A, where you use that UTM at and B, you can actually make sure that you're kind of following the same consistency so that you can keep it on, on track with your marketing efforts. Yes, sir. Where can we find copies of your two-hour version? Um, I have an actual six-hour version where I go into advanced. That was actually the basics. Uh, we go into advanced stuff. We also talk about a bunch of other stuff. Um, it's on iThemes webinars. Um, I also have a little bit longer version of this on uh, there's a free, free webinar on iThemes webinars as well. <laughs> iThemes. Uh, iThemes. Training.iThemes.com. Yes, ma'am. If you guys don't mind, we're still doing some question and answers. If everyone can just kind of keep it down. I'm sorry, ma'am. Um, so on the analytics dashboard site, it gives what they call analytics intelligence off to the right. Is that something that you find to be useful at all? Um, I haven't really been a big fan of it. Uh, it's something they're still working out. It's kind of in beta. Um, I don't like it right now, but it's, I haven't had a lot of time to really dive into it and try to get it to work the way I want it to. So I'm hoping it gets better. Uh, but I believe it uses um, 
uh, AI or, 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 or I'm sorry, um, yeah, AI or something to try to figure out different uh, items. But it, it hasn't worked too well for me on my sites. So I'd give it a little bit more time. Yes, sir. Uh, GDPR. Uh, so uh, on training.ithemes.com, I actually have a whole section on GDPR, but obviously I wouldn't be able to fit it in here. Um, so GDPR, there's a couple different things you can do with that. Um, you would want to, there is a setting that you can put on inside Google Analytics to anonymize IPs. It basically takes that last uh, three digits and basically anonymizes those to make it so you just won't get as good of location data. It'll say they're like in Florida, but they won't say where in Florida they might be. Um, and then you also have a couple other pieces that you're able to, um, uh, in, inside there you can turn off pulling in demographics and a couple of those different items. Uh, but if you do a search on it or go to, like I said, training.ithemes.com training under their past webinars, you'll see a Google Analytics one. I have a whole section on GDPR that I go through. It's like five steps to make a GDPR compliant. So. Um, I will be around. Uh, we do need to go ahead and hand the room over so we can get going with giving out prizes and all that fun stuff. So, but thank you for coming, and I will be right outside, uh, and y'all can talk to me there. <laughs>